Thomas suspended for the Austrians. But they're missing two key players. Akaidin, who's been a central defender, been a regular throughout. But their key player is Chelanolu. Yeah, it's a big miss. Huge miss. We touched on it already before the game. But he has the experience. And with the young players around him, I think he really will be missed this evening. The game is underway. And Austria, who are renowned for making fast starts. They play with a real intensity. There is a real energetic vibe here inside Leipzig. And already Baumgartner looks for a ball through towards the run of Sabitzer. That's the sort of start that we expect from the Austrians. It's exactly the start. I mean, nearly a chance straight away, and they score so many early goals, and you can see why. Meanwhile, Goulet looks for the run of Yilmaz through the middle. <laughs> And Yilmaz wins a corner kick, and he whips up the Turkish crowd. They don't need much whipping up, I can tell you. They're already in a frenzy as a smoke, a red smoke bomb has been let off behind that goal, away towards our right. But a couple of early chances inside, I don't know, the opening 30 seconds? Well, if that's an indicator to what this game's going to be like, then bring it on. Corner for Turkey, it's an in-swinger! Goal on clearance! General! Pounces inside! seconds played the place has gone absolutely deserved behind the goal it was a goal like clearance by Austria they never dealt with it and there was Mirant Emeril to score from close range and Turkey lead by a goal to nil well right in front of the Turkish supporters in that goal it's a brilliant left footed delivery corner into the box from Gula, puts real pace and whip on the ball, it's not dealt with, it's ricocheting about, comes off Leinhardt, and it just falls at the feet of Demiral. He's less than six yards out, slides onto the floor with his left foot, and just smashes the ball into the roof of the net, and the stadium goes wild behind the goal, I mean, there's flares going off and all sorts. A number of flares not just in that end away towards our right, there's one right in front of the UEFA dignitaries over on the far side. So Vincent, this is an opportunity here for Austria with Baumgartner, just wide. Edge of the area, right footed, angled back across, wide of the left hand post, goal kick, but Turkey lead 1-0. When we thought this game was going to be lively, did you expect this in the first two, three minutes? No. Crazy, what a start to the game. Chance after chance, that flashing just wide. Baumgartner's right foot as he just takes it a little bit too wide onto the box and tries to pull it back across the goal with his right foot, skimming just about an inch or two wide of the far post. What a start to the game. I would say that the Turkish support inside this 40,000 arena is three quarters back in Turkey. Lima looks for one of them better. Sends over the cross. Oh. That was quite high. Arnautovic tries to get there. Comes out now to Seifelt. He loses the ball. Yilmaz with a break and the ball is clattered out by Posh. There has been no respite. It has been a frantic three minutes. Well, how about the response from Austria? I have to say, they have just picked up and carried on like nothing's happened in this game. Like they haven't gone a goal behind. The positivity, the confidence... The press, the directness, nothing has changed. Talk about a, a team not going into their shell. It would be easy to have a little wobble at this stage in the game after going one down so early. But they're super confident. They fully believe in what they're doing. Here is Baumgartner, sharp turn, running forward. But it's going to be blocked by Kirk Chu, who will look to bring it clear. And the referee, and conscious, actually, I still haven't had a chance to give you the two teams line up just as yet. Lima out towards Sabitzer. Sabitzer on the left, a cacophony of whistles to greet the Austrians in possession. Here is Sabitzer, Yilmaz is back there, no foul. And those whistles now cheers. Turkish cheers as they get the ball away, that wasn't the best of clearances. Ball now with Baumgartner, tries to nick it down the line, Sabitzer left-hand side, block comes in behind for a corner kick. So, tensing goal for Austria. Back four of Posh, Reinhardt, Danso and Bennett, Schmidt, Leimer, Seifelt, Baumgartner, Sabitzer and Arnautovic. And then you've got Gunok, Mulder, Kariolu, Badachi, Demiral, Yüksek, Ihan, Kirkju, Yildiz, Gule and Yilmaz. 
for Turkey. Turkey lead by a goal to nil. Deafening noise here in Leipzig. It's going to be Schmidt to take it. Near side to left, right footed. No elevation. Oh, I thought it got all How is that? It went right across the goal line and then it's run out of play. Baumgartner has gone down inside the penalty area. No elevation, touch at the near post. How did it not go at the near post or indeed at the far post? How is that not a goal? I mean, that's incredible. Is that intended, that corner? I mean, it, it looks like he's miscued the corner and hit it low, but I actually think it's on purpose. Then there's a run across the near post. It stops any Turkish player kind of dealing with the ball. It then bounces right across a yard away from the goal. There's players everywhere. There's a real melee and Baumgartner's coming into the back post. And I think he gets his leg completely volleyed by somebody. It might have been Kalioglu in there who just kicked through the back of his leg. I, I think... Well, he's complaining to the referee as if he was fouled, to be honest, because I think he's just about to tap it in at the back post and somebody comes through and volleys the back of his leg and he's still laying on the floor getting treatment. It was almost like a little grubber kick, wasn't yeah. it, that you'd see in rugby? Yeah, I'm not sure if it was intended or a miscue. Either way, it ended up in exactly the right place. And, well, that's the second kind of fumble at the corner, really, because the first, the goal was a real ricochet and a bit of a mess from Austria. And that one there... Very nearly in the back of the net again. Not aware that there was a VAR check. Baumgartner is up on his feet, but he's off the field of play. The end behind that goal to our left is bouncing up and down in a, a sea of red for the Austrian support. It's a corner kick. They trail by a goal to nil. The referee, who is Arta Diaz from Portugal, is happy for the corner kick to be taken. Should be an outswinger over on that far side to right. In comes the corner now, it's an away swinger and climbing at the near post and his header off target was Lean Hart from the back and it will be a goal kick. You know that goal, before this tournament, the quickest goal in the history of the European Championship was 67 seconds back in 2004 from Kirichenko and then obviously we had the Albanian goal against Italy after 23 seconds. The goal from Demiral I think was around a minute Maybe. A bit, a lot, a bit more than Was that. Was it just a bit more? Maybe. Because there'd been a, a, an, an attack up the other end first. Pro probably around that time, not far off. An incredible start to the game. I've never seen so many opportunities so early in a game as this. Yeah. I mean, that, that, there's probably been five already in the opening six or seven minutes. Well, you mentioned about how the Austrians look to, to start quickly. They've scored a goal with inside the opening ten minutes in six of their seven matches in 2024. And indeed, when they they beat Turkey in March in a 6-1 victory in a friendly, it was Schlager, who's missing this tournament through injury, who scored a quick goal after just two minutes. But here they've conceded one. And now there's a mistake at the, uh, the left back and then it, and it goes out of play for a Turkey throw on this near side, seven minutes play. Well, Pence puts his hand up, the goalkeeper who fired the ball out to him. It was a horrible pass. He caught it too, too fat, really, and he bounced it into him. It was a hard one to control. It just ricochets off of Veni's shin and out for a throw-in. But Austria, they are not phased. They're, no, they're, they're the type of team, they're so methodical. doesn't matter what's happening, doesn't matter what the score is. If they go behind, they go in front. They've got their game plan, they've got their messages, they've got the picture of what they're going to do and they'll just go and apply it. They've been really impressive since going behind. 58 seconds, it was officially timed out. So that is the second fastest goal in the history of the European Championship. Turkey lead, Lima forward, pushes the ball to Arnautovic, back towards Lima, and then that was a clearance at the heart of that defence. Ihan just dropping back, Turkey though coming forward, cross comes in towards Sabitza, tries to lift it to Arnautovic, headed out at the back, Seifelt heads it towards Lima, prods it out towards Mvene. On this near side, Yilmaz tracking him. Turkey try and keep their shape as Austria have the ball. Danso. Ball played through the middle and it goes all the way through to Mert Gunuk, away towards our left. 1-0 to Turkey. It's interesting with Gula playing very central this evening as well isn't it? Yilmaz kind of pulling out on this right-hand side and Gula looks like he's 
He's got a bit of a free reign, actually, just picking up the ball there in that number 10 position and popping it wide. Gulat gets it back from Mulder. He was born in Vienna, was the uh, the Fenerbahce defender. Came through the Rapid Vienna Academy, he did, the uh, the right back. Both he and Gulat scored terrific goals in the uh, the opening game against Georgia. Ten minutes played and it's been fast and frenetic here in Leipzig. BBC Radio 5 Live, ball played up towards Yilmaz, tried to lay it off first time. Kirkshu wasn't on the same wavelength, there was Danso. Seibelt plays the ball through. Now this is an opportunity for Baumgartner and he went on a little mazy run and he was caught yeah. by Kirkshu. Checking it was Kirkshu and not Yuksek. No, it was Kirkshu, so he will be... So, I mean, there's so he's, many. He's definitely missing the next game. The seven of the <laughs> Turkish starting eleven and yeah. six of the Austrian starting eleven who will now miss a potential quarter-final. Yeah, shame. And shame Kirkshu is one of them. Shame for him. It is a, I'd have to say he's quite a cynical fan. Baumgartner has gone past him in that centre of the pitch. He's driving towards the D on the edge of the 18-yard box and he slides and takes him out. It probably is a yellow card. It's a lovely position for Sabitza, lining up with his right foot. The likelihood is whoever wins... If there's a few yellow cards here tonight, they will be severely depleted to taking on the Dutch in Berlin in the quarter-final on Saturday night. Free kick, though, for Austria. Red shirts, black shorts. They're playing from right to left as we look. They trail by a goal to nil. Sabitza with a free kick into the top of the wall. Every decision that goes in favour of Turkey is being cheered by their passionate support. That one wasn't cheered because the attempted block ran out and the ricochet off the corner flag over on that far side, the right, has gone for an Austrian corner. The wall does well there, actually, in that free kick. They jump, which not every wall does jump, but they jump and really get a good block. It's a header that just guides the ball away from the goal and it just spins out off the corner flag for, for a corner. Corner kick to Austria, far side the right. It's high, drifting away from goal. Downward header, a little spin by Posh, blocked, comes out towards Lima, spreads it back out towards the right-hand side, fired in by Schmidt. Good stretching block that came in from Juksek. Out of play it goes for another Austrian throw over on that far side. What a breathless start we've had. It is literally take a breath, isn't it? I mean, it, it's just everything's happened. Throw is a long one from the right-hand side into the Turkey penalty area. Headed away. Headed back and the referee's blown his whistle from that ball that was knocked back in by Seifelt. And there will be another chance for a little bit of respite for the back there. But Demiral with the opening goal, the goal inside 60 seconds. You might recall he scored an own goal against Italy in the opening game of the last Euros. It's his first goal in two years. His last was against the Faroes. This for Demiral, only his third as he approaches 50 caps for his country. Former Juventus and Atalanta defender has now... Mulder, back heels the ball, Gula, down the line it goes, Mulder again is on this near side, tries to play it in early, headed out by Danso, Kirkshu plays it out towards Cariolo, the left back, with the dark mop of hair, Kirkshu chips it across towards Mulder, getting forward on this near side, 12 and a half minutes play. that's Ihan in field, Kirkshu looks for Mulder, inside to Yilmaz, Mulder looks it now to Goulet, trying to turn inside the penalty area with a cutback. Danso with a clearance in front of his goalkeeper, Patrick Pence. And Austria get it away, but Turkey get the ball back. 1-0 they lead. I'll tell you, you know the sign of a top player, don't you? When every time they get the ball, they just look like they have space and they're calm. That is Gula to a T. I mean, he, he's just constantly calming everyone down finding space when he receives it he's, nothing's rushed at all even that ball looped over the top that he has a first touch creates a bit of space manages to get the ball into the box just to test the Austrian defence to deal with it I mean he, he just looks a class act doesn't he an unused substitute in the Champions League final only actually made 12 appearances for Real Madrid but he did score 6 goals in that 
characters and appearances for La Liga champions. Let's get an update from Wimbledon. Jonathan Overhead. Jack Draper, big match on centre court against Elias Ema from Sweden. We're deep in a fourth set with Draper leading it by uh, two sets to one. 4 3 up now in this tight fourth set. And Cam Norrie on the court number three, five games all, having won the first set against Diaz Acosta. Thank you, Jonathan. Commentary continues on Sports Extra. This is the Euros. No football tomorrow. So day three of Wimbledon at one o'clock with Claire McDonald and Gigi Salmon as Yilmaz with a little turn just presents it to Leinhardt and he steps out of defence and brings it clear. Touches the ball to Seifel just over the uh, halfway line. Schmidt now on that far side. Once again, the whistles, the boos and the jeers because Austria are in possession. Deafening noise inside this arena here in uh, in Leipzig. As Leinhardt along the ground, Baumgarten over that little flick didn't quite come off. Goulet plays the ball forward. Opportunity now for Yildiz to make the run. Brilliant tackle that was. Seibel managed to just get a tiny piece of the ball as he went to ground and slid along to win the ball back for Austria. Baumgartner, Sabitzer, with his braided hair. He's got the hairstyle very similar to Calvin Phillips in, in some respects, hasn't he? The former Manchester United player. It is an interesting look, isn't it? If only, Deno, <laughs> If eh? only. That is another case of Sutonitis. It's catching. <laughs> and Vene, back to Leinhardt. Left of the centre circle. Austria slow it down, but they've got two banks of white shirts that they've got to try and penetrate because Yilmaz... Drops in on this near side, the right. Goulet, Kirkchu, and then Yield is on that far side. Ihan then just sits in front of that back four. So they do look a very, very yeah. compact unit. You've got Juksek in that midfield as well. I think they're concerned, they were concerned about the midfield before the game in terms of how Austria do dominate that area of the pitch, and they've certainly packed it out a bit. Schmidt with the cross. Demaral with a header away. Back towards Schmidt on the right-hand side. There was Kirkchup. He's been industrious. Gets it clear. Only as far as Danso. Central defender. Infield to Lima. In the centre of midfield. Has been playing on the right-hand side in some of the group games. He turns. He has got so much energy. Really, really talented player, Lima. Who, of course, Bayern Munich... For uh, Austria, but also a former Leipzig player. He can run all day, can't he? Lima, he is got some engine on him, doesn't stop. Back on familiar territory here as the Austrian support. They're clapping in unison behind that goal, helping to create wonderful noise here in Leipzig on Five Live. 17 minutes played, 1 0 low to Turkey. To Kelly's point about. Still Austria yet to keep a clean sheet. Patrick Pence, his fourth mm. appearance. Do give the opposition opportunities. It's a, it a sloppy goal from their part as well. Ball lifted over the top. Demiral heads it away. There is Arnautovic. Just tries to let the ball settle. Looks to knock it back. Goes out of play. On this near side, the Austrian left. And better to take it. Certainly, though, you get the impression there are more goals in this game. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't think he's going to finish there at all. If, if it does, I'll be very, very surprised. This is Posh, the right back. Back to Danso. Had that spell when he was on loan at Southampton from Augsburg. Leinhardt and Venet. Quite short in stature, the, uh, the left back. Lima. Danso, four to the centre circle. Posh goes on a run ahead of right back. This is Baumgartner cutting inside, along the ground with a bit of pace. Turkey, though, were back, and they break it up now. And Goulet has only got Yilmaz ahead of him. He might need to go it alone. He goes for an effort on goal. It was a left-footed effort from inside the centre circle. Not lacking for uh, imagination, because he'd seen that Pence was off his goal line, and he went for goal, and it was, in the end, drifting away easily. Um, I mean, he's got some awareness, hasn't he? the way he chopped the ball in between his feet I mean he was dealing with a close quarters situation where he had to manoeuvre past someone and be able to get your peripheral vision up there to see the other half the other end of the pitch is impressive and he, it was on a little bit Pence was quite a long way off his line probably on the edge of the 18 yard box and he was just too much under pressure to get his left foot through the ball properly and just scuff the effort but great vision from 
the young man again. Quite slight, but a real talent. And given the fact that he was injured in the first half of the season, you do wonder how many more he'd have been able to add to those 12 appearances for Real Madrid in that first successful season after he joined last summer from Fenerbahce. Turkey lead by a goal to nil. 19 minutes played. Schmidt will give chase. Demiral, the goal scorer, tidies it up. Back towards Gunok, gets it away first time. And now coming back into his penalty area to give the ball away, actually, was Yüksek. That was, he's got away with it. Turkey are back in possession. They're good at that Austria, though, aren't they? The way they press high up the pitch, you better be sure with your passing in and around your own half or, or around the edge of your own box because Austria will press in and they turn over possession so well. Cariolu getting forward on that far side, the left. He created more chances in open play than any other player in the group stages, the Turkey left back. Cariolu, here he is once more. Badachi back after suspension. Turkey making four changes after beating the Czech Republic to reach the knockout stages. But it's the Austrian supporters who at the minute creating the noise here in Leipzig. Gilmes. Lima slips into the challenge, catches Kirkshu. That was a genuine attempt to play the ball right in front of the referee, and it was an innocent slip. And I think that's been recognised by Arta Diaz, but Conrad Lima is one of those players on a yellow card. I mean, I, I don't think it's a foul, if I'm honest. I think he does catch him on the way through, but he wins the ball so cleanly first, and then he catches him with the slip. I mean, I think the referee's done well because he's, he's been measured with it and, and not got a yellow card out. There's there nothing he could do about it, it's just a slip, wasn't it? You'll have seen Arthur Diaz, he took charge of the England-Denmark game, he also refereed the Netherlands against Poland in, in Hamburg. As now you can see where the, the Turkish support is all the way around this stadium, the single tier behind each goal, the two tier on that, what is the main stand actually on that far side and this side because the Turkish flags are flying, they're up and out of their seats yet again as they still lead by a goal to nil. We're approaching the midway point of the first half. Back to SW19, Jonathan Overend. Cam Norrie leads by two sets to love now against Facundo Diaz Acosta while over on centre court. The man who's replaced him as British number one, Jack Draper, could be in trouble because he's just been broken at four all in the fourth set and his opponent Elias Ema will serve to level the match at two sets all and take his into a decider. Commentary continuing on Five Sports Extra. Yes, indeed. Cariolo on that far side. There was a foul on Schmidt. He's only getting to his feet now. The referee let play continue as Kirkchu yield is. Kirkchu early ball into the penalty area. Almost dropped towards Yilmaz. It's been picked up by Mulder. This is Kirkchu. Tries to get it out from his feet with his back to goal. Forced away from the penalty area then passes the ball out towards that far side, and that's for, for Yildiz. Push from behind, free kick to Turkey, they lead by a goal to nil. Yeah, just a little bit too keen there from Posh. Yildiz gets his body in, shielding the ball, and the pressure's too much. I mean, they are the masters at staying on their feet and applying pressure to someone on the ball, Austria. But he just goes too far there, Posh, and gives away a free kick in a dangerous area, wide on the left channel for Turkey, who had actually really enjoying the position they're in now it's almost ideal for them isn't it to get that goal lead Austria have to come out and start to probe and press and you just feel Turkey have that energy and quality on the counter that Austria have to be so careful they don't concede a second here that was certainly the luxury of that early goal from Demiral after 58 seconds corner kick Goulet to take it headed away by Danso tumbles to the ground, Mulder's cross, blocked by Baumgartner behind for a corner kick and Mulder, the right back, whips up once again the Turkish crowd behind that goal and they respond, Turkish flags in the air, swirling the red and white scarves as well, anything that is red and white in that end is being tossed in the air by the Turkish support Goulet takes it, repelled at the near post, behind for another corner kick, Turkey still lead 1-0 Leanhart with the defence Yeah, good header Good deliveries again. These, these left foot in swingers that Gula is putting into the box. I mean, he may play short now. Kukchu's just gone over. But while he's got this quality, he, he should just keep sticking it in there. Bardacci's up from the back. Bardacci's oh. in there. And so was Demiral once again. Got in front of his defensive partner. And his header at the near post 
probably about a foot over the top of the crossbar. Goal kick, Turkey still lead Austria 1-0, five live. Yeah, it's off the shoulder of Demiral, makes a really good timed run and a leap. I mean, the delivery is superb, it's so difficult to deal with because it's just over the defender who's in that near post position. It's a good couple of inches, perfect, just over his head for anyone going in and attacking the ball in behind. Lovely delivery into the box. Turkey have never won three games at a single Euros. This is their joint best of two, as was the case in 2008. They've not won a knockout match in open play either, as they look for a first quarter-final appearance in 16 years. They have a slender lead. Arnautovic, back to Sabitza, and Vena, very tight, and Vena's overrun that and he has to challenge Yilmaz for it and succeeds by bringing the ball away. Diagonal ball in field. Schmidt has come into a central area. And Venner now looks for the run of Sabitza. Vardacci will go with him. Across on this near side, the left. Sabitza now delivers the ball. Headed away, though. Headed further clear by Yüksek. Headed back by Seifelt. Then goes past him. Very scrappy there on the edge of the penalty oh. area. Kirkshu, though, does well. Yilmaz, break is on for Turkey, leaves it short, combines with Kirkshu, back towards Yilmaz, nicks it away past Leinhardt, Yilmaz enters the penalty area, sends over oh. the cross, Yildiz was arriving, it was played fractionally behind him. What a promising counter-attack that was by Turkey. Yildiz with a cross, flying header away by a tumbling Leinhardt, terrific game. Oh, it's just brilliant. The way, the competitiveness in that middle of the park, the ball's bouncing about, there's so many really good midfield players that are superb at picking up second balls or nicking it off your toe or there's a bouncing ball somebody gets there first is so competitive and the way turkey then the flair that they have in those positions to make things happen get on the count a ball into the box nearly another chance it's just slightly behind the arriving play i don't know who it was who yield it was. was it yield is arriving at the back post just slightly behind him he was three the last time that Turkey advance from the group stages here is Yilmaz finds an area of space tries to just nudge it past Leinhardt you know you've beaten me once you're not beating me a second time and now he steps out of defense and he releases Arnautovic Arnautovic on this near side the left closed down by Demiral there's a little step over they doubled up on Arnautovic looks up tries to play the ball in for the run there of Schmidt gathered in by Gunok what a pace this game is being played at well, it's just end-to-end -end. I mentioned the, the fitness before the game this is certainly a match where you're going to see some of the best, fittest players in terms of the way Austria set up and Turkey, to be honest. Second half's going to be really interesting. Who can maintain that, this kind of tempo and pace? It has moments where it just settles, but when it does go, Deno, it is end-to-end, -end, isn't it? Certainly is. That's the familiar voice of Matthew Upson on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds, live in Leipzig, where Turkey have the advantage by... A goal to nil. Badachi rolls it. Goulet oh. able to lay it off. Deft little touch into the path of the onrunning Kirkshu. Brings it clear. Cariola, the left back, leaves it. Yield is. Cariola's going to go on the overlap. Instead, it's inside. Goulet now to Mulder on this near side, the right. Controls it. Couple of touches with his right boot. Slows it down. Back inside to Yuxek. Yuxek. Goulet would just backs off Lima. And it required then the central defender, Leinhardt just to leave he was keeping an eye on Yilmaz because yeah. otherwise there was a gap that was just going to start to appear between the two central defenders well, that's what he wants he wants he's trying to draw him out to create that hole for somebody else to go in it was a clever decision from Lean Hart not to come out actually because I think you'd have seen a Turkish player just spin in there well you called it earlier on but that that free reign that Guler has got with his oh, movement off the ball horrible to play against it because you're not up against anyone. As a centre-back, you want to feel someone, you want to beat, you want to know what your role and what your job is. And with him, he's dropping all over. And at times, they've got nobody in that number nine position. The midfield is packed out because they identified that as an area where they're going to struggle because Austria, Sievold, Lehmer, Baumgartner are dropping in there, are a real handful. So they're handling that. But as a centre-back, neither Danso or Leinhardt have any definitive player to, to play up against. And so your decision-making has to be spot on. Well, a free kick is given in favour of Turkey. And just on that as well, Matt, before this free kick is taken, Yilmaz is dropping out to this near side, the right. But because Mulder, the right back, is also getting forward, Leinhardt's having to come across to help out the, the Austrian left back and Vene. Because he's 2v1 all the time. So he's coming out. 
they're, they're trying to move Austria all over. And like I said, the goal, the early goal to give them that, that, that kind of cushion to be able to sit back and counter and not come out too high is really suiting Turkey at the moment. And, you know, Austria having to do a lot of the work. Ball goes back to the Turkish goalkeeper Gunok. Bardacci leaves it for Kariolu. This is Yüksek, defensive midfielder. A lot of time on the ball for him at the moment. And now he just leaves it for Demiral. Comes to a, a walking pace, strokes it back towards Bardacci. Cariolo has gone forward into an inverted roll, the left back on that far side. On that occasion, Goulet is the one who drops deep. And they look for uh, Yildiz and it runs out of play for a throw. And we'll go to Wimbledon again and Jonathan Overend. Two sets all on centre court. It's a late night thriller here, not involving Andy Murray, but the man who took his place in the prime slot in the schedule today, that's Jack Draper, the new British number one. He conceded his serve in the ninth game of the fourth set. And then as Ema slipped love 40 down, Draper couldn't convert those breakback points. And we are into a deciding set. Jack Draper against Elias Ema. Commentary continues on Sports Extra. This is the Euros, live in Leipzig, five live BBC sounds, where Turkey still leading through Demiral's goal inside the opening 60 seconds, and he just marshals the ball safely back towards Mert Gunok, the Besiktas goalkeeper, as now the Turkey supporters are lighting up their mobile phones and waving them from side to side. And they are absolutely everywhere. There's even a couple right in the heart <laughs> of the Austrian end. It's brave over there, isn't it? Very brave. Yeah, if ever there was a telltale sign. <laughs> Clearance from Gunok. Swept long, out towards that far side. Good control from Yildiz. Plays it back now to Bardacci. Once again, Cadiolo getting forward, the, got, uh, the left back. He's got some freedom, hasn't he? I mean, it really is like the system of Austria against the, the freedom of, of how Turkey are playing. It's really it's making the game so exciting. Similar formations, but such different styles, the way they're going about it. And like you say, the left-back, Kadioglu, he's popping up all over the place. But he's just looked for the run of Gula, who applauds it with his hands above his head as he claps, as it goes through towards the, uh, the goalkeeper, Patrick Pence, for, uh, for Austria. But the, the ball was on, it was played with pace along the ground as Austria will play out from the back. Half an hour played on BBC Radio 5 Live. And Turkey still lead by a goal to nil. Schmidt's ball out towards Posh, who's quite tall. A little cumbersome, really, for a, a right back, and he was never going to get there, and it was a Turkey throw, but they've lost it. And this is Seifelt. It's been a regular feature. A lot of running in that uh, that midfield but he's running out of play for a, a throw to Turkey I think he's played the most minutes out of all of them for Ralf Ragnick hasn't he Seifelt is a real favourite of his I think he likes the way he sits in that middle of the park he does things very simple gets after the ball but when he wins it he knows he just pops it off to either Baumgartner or Sabitza Lima to, to do their thing you're right he plays his club football here for Leipzig but he's played in 24 of the 25 matches under Ralf Ragnick and Venet, Sabitza, Sabitza with a shot from distance, blocked by Demiral who went down to his knees, and the ball is clipped long by Yüksek, still Turkey have a slender lead, Danso in the centre circle for Austria, here is Seifelt once again, bit of time to assess his options, passes the ball out wide right, Posh, 10, 12 yards inside the Turkey half, everybody in a white shirt with that broad red Horizontal strife across the chest, back behind the ball for Turkey. As now, it is with Leanhart once again, the central defender. Jogging after him is Goulet, but then Turkey have forced Austria back. Doesn't he always look, whatever he does though, it looks easy. Goulet is one of those players, isn't he? Even, even if he's shutting the ball down, he's doing it like looking casual, then you know, like it's in slow motion, but it's not. It's just his mannerisms are so smooth. Back with the keeper, Pence, puts his foot on the ball, just outside the D. Looking at his options, there's not much movement. In the end, it was Mvene, as Arnautovic drops deep, heads the ball in field. Lima left of the centre circle, Sabitza coming onto the ball. Arnautovic has stayed out wide on this near side, the left, and here he is. And Mvene has also ventured forward. Sabitza now does a little step over to get away from Yilmaz. Lima joins the attack, and Mvene on this near side onto his right foot with the cross edge of the area 
Turkey have everybody back, bouncing ball. Yilmaz tries to challenge, Guler picks it up. And oh. he tries to get away from three red shirts and he gets the throw for his efforts. Not I'm phased at all. I mean, the way he comes out of that situation, every angle when he has that ball is blocked by a tiny little space where he can just shuffle his feet and his body and he sees it, tries to pop it through. It doesn't quite happen, but he still wins the throw in. He's, he's got some awareness. I said to, to Chris Sutton when we did the game against Portugal for, uh, for Turkey and Dortmund, with the wonderful noise that their supporters have been creating throughout, that this is a, a fast forward for when they're going to be joint hosts with Italy in, in 2032. But in case you missed it, the German media reporting that they actually did outnumber even the host Germany in the group stages with 130,000 supporters that attended their group stage games to 125 of that of the home nation. And there has been anger because the two state broadcasters in Germany tonight, ARD and ZDF, are not showing this game. It's gone exclusively to a, a telecom company. As uh, Sabitza with the cross on the left. You consider that there are four million Turkish expats inside Germany. That is... Uh, not good news for the two state broadcasters not to be showing this one. It's not gone down well, has it? Not at all. But here we are on BBC Radio 5 Live. And what a quarter final lineup we will have for you on Friday and Saturday. Spain, Germany at 5, Portugal, France at 8. Saturday, 5 o'clock, live from Dusseldorf, England, Switzerland. And we're looking at a potential reunion in Berlin. Oh, no, we're not, sorry, we're looking at Netherlands against Turkey for that final quarter-final. And that will be like another home game for Turkey, bearing in mind the amount of Turkish expats who live in Berlin. And there's a lot of different restaurants in Leipzig as well, isn't there? There's lots of Turkish, there's some tapas, all sorts out there that you can go and enjoy in the Leipzig city centre. Yeah. It's not really your cup of tea though, Denno, is it? No, well, I'm, not, I'm quite fond you're, of a bit of tapas. You're more of a meat and two veg kind of guy. <laughs> don't don't believe that, uh, that stereotype. Okay. It's very harsh. And I am now genuinely worried that you're morphing into Chris Sutton. Here is Baumgartner. <laughs> and you would never want to do that. You're better than that. Absolutely not. Nine minutes, less than nine minutes to go to half-time. Turkey still lead by a goal to nil. Austria, though, have a throw over on that far side, the right. Just wondering when we said about this game has got more goals in it, whether we put the kiss of death on it. But it's a throw on the right, it's a long one. Danso with a flick header. Arnautovic tries the back header. Sabitza tried to wrap his right foot at it around knee height, and it's claimed well by Mert Gunok. Well, he's a handful. Arnautovic physically isn't he when he gets planted he's a big lad uses his body really well just tries to move Demiral out the way to win that header to cause chaos and keep the ball bouncing around in the penalty box but they do well Turkey now this should result in a yellow card because Cariolo was away and he was pulled back yeah. and that was by Romano Schmidt who isn't one of the players for Turkey on a yellow card but he has been booked now He's one of the few on the pitch, actually, yeah. who's not on a yellow card. So he's picked that one up there, but he's OK for the quarter-finals if they go through Austria. Hardly surprising when it's considered that 19 cards were shown between Turkey and Czechia, the most in the history of the Euros. 17 yellows and two reds. And Turkey, the first team to actually receive more the nine at a major tournament, including obviously the World Cup with 11 that was shown. Sabitza strikes his heels, falls quietly to Baumgartner. Tackle. Tackle was a good one by Yüksek. Gula inside, laid off by Kirkchu. Back towards Yüksek, midway through his own half. Mulder on this near side. We're approaching half-time in a, a game that you just cannot take your eyes off. I mean, they've, they've done better in that midfield area than what I, I thought they would, Turkey. They've really put their foot in, managed to, to cope with the Austrian players, bursting forwards, got some really important tackles in. Yüksek, Ayhan, Kutchu. They've actually 
I would say, maybe even have the edge on it in just winning those second balls and then setting the counter-attacks off. They've done very well so far. They lead by a goal to nil. Kirkshaw on the halfway line, all in white. Turkey playing from left to right as we look. And we've got about just over five minutes to go to the break. Yilmaz away from Leanheart. Rolls it. Yildiz comes into a central area, creates the space for Cariolu on that far side, the left. Yilmaz has made that run into the inside left channel. He tried to thread it through to him, it was blocked, it goes out for a turkey throw. Yil Yilmaz is causing Philip Leinhardt all sorts of problems. He is, because he's between the two. He's not up top, he's not wide, he's not tucked, he's just moving about all over, and that's what they've done differently, Turkey. They've, the front three haven't got any fixed position, they're just drifting all in between positions and Austria, the, the back four of Austria, having to make decisions all the time where to be. Kirkshu wins the challenge, left-hand side, cuts it back with some force actually, about 10 yards up from the, uh, the byline. Ihan, who's just sat by and large, now does venture forward with his short dark hair, keeps the ball in play. On this near side, the right, Mulder, Ihan, Comes in field, Lima goes to close him down. Cariolu actually comes across to this near side, the left back. So they've got a man over now in Cariolu. Here he is, he's got a chance to try and pick it out. Sends over the cross, looks for Yildiz, takes a tumble inside the penalty area. That was just a coming together, but the referee, Arto Diaz of Portugal, has actually given a free kick to Austria. So they still trail the Austrians 1-0. That says it all, doesn't it? Your left backs in, on the right wing position. That's the freedom that Turkey are playing within this game. That's the license they have to get all over the pitch. There's discipline in the centre, which they know is a real important area not to give up, but wide areas, full-back positions. As you've already mentioned, Yilmaz, Gula, they're just popping up all over the place and, and they have the freedom to move around and pick up the ball in, in, in pockets of space. It's making them very dangerous. They're not quite creating the chances, but they're looking like they're capable of doing it. He does have that versatility, does Cariolu. Montella actually has used him as a right-back on occasions as Baumgartner was fouled there. And Yüksek is shown a yellow card. So the problems are mounting now for Turkey because that is Kirkchu and Yüksek who are out of the quarter-final should they go through. Well, that's a shame because they've they're just been brilliant in the middle there. But such is that position and the intensity, you're going to commit the odd foul. I mean, it is quite a long way to go in this tournament, isn't it? With, with two yellow cards. It is harsh to then miss the next round all the way through to the quarters. Chalonolu and Daikaidin would be back from suspension for Turkey. At game two, they'd lose another two. With three minutes to go to half-time, though, they are in the ascendancy as they lead by a goal to nil. Back it goes to Patrick Pence, fair-haired Austrian goalkeeper. He's been on loan at, uh, at Bromby from Bayer Leverkusen. He's actually yet to make his debut in Germany for Leverkusen, as Austria, with a surging run over on that far side by Baumgartner, eventually loses the ball, Cariolo in field. This is Yildiz, does well, gets it out from the his feet and gets it through to the tall, skinny figure of Mulder, tries to slide it along the ground towards Yilmaz, cut out by Seifelt for the Austrians. And then Lima, unable to turn because of the presence of Kirkchew, and he had to go back to Dansu. Really is such an intriguing game of football. And I think it's probably the, the nature of it helped by that early goal for Turkey. It has, it has, because it's allowed them to sit back and then just play on the counter and Austria have to do all the work but they're struggling to come to grips with with how Turkey are playing certainly the back four are finding it really tricky but they've defended so well Turkey for all the the, the criticism or the, or the feeling that they're going to be open and they're going to concede a goal they've actually defended very very well and limited Austria to very few chances so far and like I say we're 43 minutes nearly at the end of the first half it's been absolutely gripping I have to say brilliant game well, since his first game, which was in June 2022, Ralph Rangnick, only three of the Euro sides actually had a higher win percentage coming into the tournament. Portugal, Spain and the Dutch. They've won 15 out of the 25 games for the former interim manager of Manchester United. But Turkey are leading by a goal to nil. With... with 
60 seconds of normal time. And Turkey get themselves a free kick midway through the Austrian half. I mean, he's done, been done very well, Yilmaz, in this first half. He's been excellent, uses his body where it's one of those, the ball's rolling across, he steps across to protect it. And Mverni is a bit too keen. He wants to step in front and nick the ball. And he just kicks through the back of Yilmaz, who takes the hit. And it's a free kick wide. And they're just very comfortable in this position. They've got men in the box, but you get the feeling they're just going to pop this one short, then, how you feel at this time, looking at the clock and where they're at. Not sure if they're going to put it in the box. I don't actually get any indication as to how much stoppage time there will be as yet, but there is an air of anticipation certainly inside the uh, Leipzig arena for the Turkish support. Kirkshu delivers it right footed, downward header by Mvenet, the left back. Sabitza will run out there, gets it before Kariolu. Loses it though, Turkey play it forward. Badatra has stayed forward, the central defender. Cross comes in, Yilmaz tries to get on the end of it over his head and picked up by the goalkeeper. One minute of additional time, which we're now into. Well, you feel Austria have to go at them. The best, best time to go at them is when they've been advanced up the pitch and then you can move the ball quickly and their space is in and around behind the midfield or wide, but Turkey have already dropped back very quickly into position. Once again, the deafening whistles from the Turkish support, baying for the referee to blow his half-time whistle as Lienhardt steps forward from the back. Arnautovic couldn't get there. Austria, who are yet to have a shot on target in this first half, snuffed out by Turkey. Yüksek loses the ball. Schmidt picks it up, drives forward, coming in. Light rain now falling in Leipzig. Cross delivered in low. And Baumgartner arriving six yards out, left-footed, prods it wide of the right-hand post. Goal kick, 1-0 Turkey. He didn't expect the ball. I think it was Bardacci who's gone to ground, he felt he was going to win it and he doesn't. Maybe it takes a little nick, he does side foot it with his left foot. It's more of a reaction from Bogartner, tricky to get it on target. The persistent light drizzle will not dampen the spirits, the fervent support of Turkey, who celebrate the half-time whistle because they have a slender lead, a goal from Demiral pouncing inside the six-yard box after 58 seconds. It's been a good watch that first half here. Half-time, Austria nil, Turkey one. Ian Dennis and Matthew Upson out in Leipzig watching that one. Chris Sutton is here in our Berlin studio. Chris, did you enjoy that first half? Yeah, I did, especially uh, the start. A crazy start, wasn't it? Um, Austria taking the, um, the game to Turkey, then Turkey... Uh, going up the other end, getting the goal uh, from the corner. And uh, I think Tur Turkey have really surprised me in the control that they've had in that first half. And, and Austria haven't really had too many attempts on target, so I expect a bit of a response from Austria in the second half. Yeah, it's tailed off very slightly, Matt, towards the end of the first half, but just breathless for the rest of it. Yeah, I think it had to, to be honest, Kelly. It was yeah. just... The, only the pace human. of it was too much, exactly. And, and, and there's been moments where, where Turkey, like, like Chris has said, have surprised, certainly in the middle of the park, they've really got to grips with the midfield area, which is a real strength of Austria. They've been competitive, the loose balls, the tackles, the running back, showed real commitment, Turkey, and they're just difficult to pick up in those wide areas. And with Gula just drifting all over, they've got real capabilities of creating something. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting one for Austria to go in at half-time and really have to figure out. Yeah, and also they go in at, at half-time, they're only a goal down. And they, they had their chances in that, that first half. Nothing, nothing too spectacular, but they went close a couple of times. They did, yeah, they had the Bam, Bam Gartner uh, chance at the, uh, the... Sorry, Matt, uh, cut over you there. Uh, at, sorry, the end of the, at the end of the half. Um, look, I think the question for the second half is, is, is can Turkey, can they keep up that concentration, that discipline um, in the second half and, and, and limit Austria to, to few chances, which they did in the first half? I'm not so sure they can. Matt? Yeah, I think the two centre-backs have been pretty good so far. Demiral, Bardacci, Demiral's been stepping in. They've been very tight. They've been, you know, competing for the balls, defending the box well. But whether or not they will succumb to the relentless kind of machine that Austria are with the way they go about things I think that that will be the biggest question I'm anticipating a change as well at half time because Michael Gregoric is warming up he scored a hat-trick 
in the 6-1 win for Austria against Turkey in March. And he's going through an extensive warm-up here inside the, uh, the stadium. And Ian Dennis and Matt Upson will bring us news of that change that happened just before the start of the second half in Leipzig. And Matt was praising Demerol's defensive performances, but it is his goal that separates the sides at half-time. It's Austria nil, Turkey one. We will have the very latest from Wimbledon and the second half of this game after the BBC News with Dan Maudsley. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Euros and the general election 2024. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The UK's most prolific serial killer of children, Lucy Latby, has been convicted of attempting to murder another baby at the hospital where she worked. Last year, the former nurse was found guilty of murdering seven newborn babies and attempting to kill six others at the Countess of Chester Hospital. But the jury couldn't reach a verdict on the case of the girl known as Baby K. Here's the former chief prosecutor for North West England, Nazir Afsal. In previous cases where somebody has been convicted of a homicide and been given a significant sentence, it would take a lot for me to then retry them for something else that wouldn't necessarily add to their sentence. However, children being harmed, you know, losing their lives. In this case, I can understand why it was significant enough for them to say we will pursue this case. Party leaders have been touring the UK to reinforce their key messages on the penultimate day of election campaigning. Rishi Sunak insisted he hadn't given up hope of winning on Thursday, while Sakir Starmer acknowledged that an early release scheme for some prisoners would probably continue in England and Wales if Labour won. Democratic Congressman Lloyd Doggett has become the first to call on President Biden to step aside as the party's nominee for the upcoming US election after he stumbled through a debate with Donald Trump last week. His comments come as the former Democratic Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, said it was a legitimate question as to whether the president's performance was indicative of a deeper problem. From Washington, here's Nomia Iqbal. Nancy Pelosi is close to President Biden, but said they hadn't spoken since the presidential debate last Thursday. His stumbling and at times incoherent performance against Donald Trump sparked huge concerns about his mental fitness. Mrs Pelosi said the president should have test results regarding physical and mental health, but she said so should Donald Trump. Some Democrats have been calling for the president to step aside, but Nancy Pelosi said she refused to do that. A new poll by CNN, which hosted the debate, suggests three quarters of US voters believe Democrats would have a better chance at holding on to the presidency with someone else in charge. And Donald Trump's sentencing in his hush money trial has been postponed until September. His legal team asked for his conviction to be overturned after the Supreme Court ruled that the former presidents at that former presidents had partial immunity for official acts that took place during their time in office. Oh, it's our favourite place in the world. The wonderful bunch of people. Catch Coldplay at Glastonbury. Lounging at home with Chris the Cat. Glastonbury, we bring it to you. Watch on iPlayer, listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Kelly Kitts. Euro 2024 Deutschland. Second half coming up from Leipzig, where it's been really entertaining so far between Austria and Turkey. Just the one goal in it, though. Turkey lead by a goal to nil. Uh, second half coming up with Matthew Upson and Ian Dennis very shortly. The winners of this last 16 tie will face the Netherlands in Berlin on Saturday after the Dutch eased past Romania 3-0 earlier on. Liverpool's Cody Gakpo scored the first and set up the second. This is what he said afterwards. We played a good game. We showed a great reaction from the, from the last one and... Yeah, very pleased. I mean, this feels like the performance that everybody was waiting for, for the run in this tournament. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, especially after the last uh, after the last game, we, we needed a reaction. And I think uh, today was a, right, uh, a good step in the right direction. And what was different tonight? I mean, it seemed more aggressive. You wanted more of the ball. Is that something you talked about a lot in the last week? Yeah, we talked a lot about the aggression, uh, the intensity, like uh, defending like a team. So I think that was uh, what I said. A uh, good step today again and uh, very happy that we won and uh, played a good game. And I have to ask you, after your goal, you ran straight over to the bench, was that to the, the physio? Yeah, he told me yesterday evening, uh, you're going to score the first goal today. So I said, if I do that, I come to you. So that's why. 
That was Cody Gakpo talking after the Netherlands 3-0 win against Romania earlier. Turkey in pole position to be joining them in their quarter-final tie. They lead Austria 1-0 at half-time. Also been a really busy day at Wimbledon, especially for the Brits, where those with a ticket for centre court might have been expecting late-night drama with Andy Murray. But they do have British interest in the form of Jack Draper and watching that match. Jonathan Overend. Yes, instead of that, Kelly, they get late-night drama in the form of the heir apparent. Jack Draper, 28th seed, seeded at a slam for the first time. Still very much on the rise, still so young, but really being tested tonight by the lowly-ranked Elias Ema from Sweden, who's never been inside the world's top 100, but has forced Draper into a deciding set. However, Jack Draper has the advantage, and it's a sizable advantage now in the deciding set. Leads it four games to one. Laura Robson is alongside me. Laura, why has this been so tough for Jack tonight? Well, Jack just hasn't found his timing consistently throughout the match. There's been glimmers of really good tennis from him, and then the next couple of points, a bit of a dip, and it's nothing to do with his attitude, which has been outstanding. He's competing. Well, it really is the timing. It's just one of those days where you can't play your best tennis for whatever reason. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It just is what it is. But he's doing well. He's battling away here, up 4-1 in the fifth. And finally, he has a bit of momentum on his side. That break came out of nowhere. And he's taken it and ran with it. Yeah, just about getting over the line. This for Jack Draper now. 4-1 goes for a passing winner, but just misses with it. Broke to love, actually, in the fourth game with Ema double faulting, break point down, perhaps tiring a little the Swede. Meanwhile, over on the number three court, Cam Norrie, close to victory. Two sets up on Facundo Diaz Acosta. 4-2 Norrie leads in the third set, although he did lead for love. So one of those breaks has been pegged back. And Dan Evans also on court. He's lost the first set to Alejandro Tabillo, and it's three games all in the second. Just a word on those two. Laura, I mean, obviously unusual to have three British men all on court at the same time. Unusual. Dan Evans just suspended for the night, um, so he'll be almost pleased, I reckon, to have that break of, of play, come back tomorrow, try and reset. And I am pumped for Cam Norrie that he has got the break in the third yet there because he's had a very, very tough year of results, hasn't had much confidence at all coming into this tournament. So this will be huge for him to get over the line. Even though he is still technically the favourite in this matchup, it won't have felt like that when he took to the court today. So Kelly, obviously here at four minutes to nine in the evening, some matches, as Laura says, are starting to be suspended for bad light on the outside courts. Hopefully Norrie has enough time to get it done out there. While well, here on centre, we're under the roof for this deciding set, so we can play as long as it takes to get this Draper match done. And we know they will go as long as it takes to get these matches done. Um, Jonathan, I don't know what you and Laura have made of the performances of the rest of the British players today. Well, there have been lots of them, Laura, haven't there? Wins for Katie Bolter and for Harriet Dart. They will play each other in the women's singles. In the men's for Jacob Fernley, terrific win for him. Uh, but defeats for Henry Searle, the junior champion from last year, for Fran Jones, for Billy Harris, for Jan Choinsky, and for Paul Jubb from Two Sets to Love Up. What, what caught your eye among them? Absolutely, Jacob Fernley did. Um, coming through that one, he has barely played a main draw ATP match up until a few weeks ago he was trying to qualify for challenger matches so this is a huge step up for him coming through that one he's just got such a nice game to watch and the challenge now is that he yes. plays Novak Djokovic on what will most likely be centre court on Thursday and what an opportunity that is obviously the underdog going into that one but you, you just never know I guess and and yeah for him to walk out onto centre court having a just received a wild card last week for the main draw. It will be something special. Incredible. Yeah, so that will be Thursday, Kelly. Fernley against Djokovic, as Laura says, almost certainly on centre court. Yeah, and the reason he's playing Djokovic is because he won his first match since undergoing knee surgery. Seven-time champion beat Victor Priva 6-1, 6-2, 6-2 to reach the second round. And it's his first match since knee surgery last month. Well, I, I try to really focus on the game and not really think too much about the knee, you know. Everything that I could possibly do, I've done along with my team in the last three and a half weeks in order to give myself a, a chance to be able to, to play in front of you here today. So I think if it, if it, if it was for any other tournament, I, I probably wouldn't, uh, wouldn't risk it, wouldn't rush it as much. I just love Wimbledon, love coming back here. 
So Novak Djokovic looking good and saying all the right things at Wimbledon. But it was also a good day for the women's world number one as well, Jonathan. Yes, that's Igor Sviontek who beat Sofia Kenin 6-3, 6-4. So much happening today. The women's top seed almost went a little under the radar on court number one. But she's going to be fascinating to watch, I think, Laura, this fortnight, Sviontek, because she won the junior title here but has never been beyond the quarters in the senior competition despite winning five Grand Slams elsewhere. So could this be the year for her? Oh, I think that's a tough call to make this early on. Uh, but certainly the draw on one particular side has opened up, uh, not the side that she would like. But, um, you know, for Iga, I think she's definitely trying to make some adjustments in her game. She is traditionally a clay court player. That is her favourite surface by far. That's where she's had her best results. And I think quite often in the past, she's come to Wimbledon, having been off the back of this huge run of wins. And then it's a bit of a lull, isn't it, emotionally, after, yes. after winning so many matches and then having to reset for you know the next slam so quickly there's hardly any turnaround time but she's made a real concerted effort to change a few things in her game she's trying to flatten out her forehand she's trying to flatten out her serve so it doesn't sit up quite so much on a grass court and whether that makes a big difference i think we'll find out over the next two weeks but i certainly given how mentally strong she is would ex expect to see her in the second week and the other big story in that half of the women's draw kelly today is defeat for the defending champion marqueta von Drusseva to the spaniard jessica buzas maniero First time in 30 years that the women's defending champion has lost in the opening round 12 months on. Jonathan, just a, a quick word on Cameron Norrie and his progress as he closes in on victory. Yes, serving for the match at 5-2, but frustratingly finds himself break point down again. So it'll be, get, it'll be getting awkward for the officials to know whether they should maybe suspend it, but hopefully not with Norrie so close to victory, while Draper's been having break points again on the EMA serve on centre court. So both of these British men close to victory at the moment on different courts here at Wimbledon. Thank you very much for that, Jonathan. Yeah, I was trying to decipher what the what all the roars in the background were, but yeah, that's how Jack Draper's getting on on centre court. Thank you very much to Jonathan Overend and to Laura Robson at Wimbledon. Remember, coverage continues on Sports Extra, and here on Five Live Sport, we'll have regular updates from Wimbledon as that game progresses. As Jonathan said, that will go as long as it needs to on centre court underneath the roof. Meanwhile, we're about to head back to Leipzig. It's Austria against Turkey. You're a bit worried if Turkey can, can hold out in terms of their, their intensity, their discipline in this second half, even though they've got that 1-0 advantage. Yeah, I think throughout this tournament, uh, they have looked slightly vulnerable at the back. I mean, you, uh, watching the, the game against Czechia, and Czechia with 10 men caused them a lot of problems, uh, especially in the second half. Um, but it, it looks like... Um, Austria have, uh, have brought on a couple of substitutions, so Ranić not messing about and wants to get back into this game quickly. Well, let's hear all about those substitutions with thanks to Chris Sutton, who'll be back with us at full time. We can head over to Leipzig and Matthew Upson alongside Ian Dennis. Thanks, Kelly. One of them is the one we, we mentioned uh, earlier on. Greg Orich has come on. Uh, he has replaced Schmidt. And then the other one is Alexander Pras, who has replaced Philip Mvene at, uh, at left-back. Turkey haven't made any alterations. We're back underway here in Leipzig. Still the persistent light rain is falling as Turkey lead by a goal to nil. And Austria in their red shirts, black shorts, will now be playing from left to right as we look. Turkey leading through Demiral's goal from close range after just 58 seconds. They're playing in all white with that broad red stripe going across, horizontal stripe going across the front of their jerseys. They line up with Gunok in goal, back four, Mulder, Bardacci, Demiral and Cariolu, Yusek, Ihan and Kirkchu in the centre of midfield with Goulet, Yildiz and Yilmaz. For Austria, they now have Pence in goal, a back four of Posh, Leinhardt, Danso and Pras, Lima, Seifelt, Baumgartner and Sabitzer. Gregorich and Arnautovic are the two up front. Gregorich just slightly playing off Arnautovic, but he's he's a big unit. He's six foot four, short dark hair, and scored a hat trick against Turkey in their 6 1 win in a friendly back in March. So he will be looking to try and make his presence felt. Now they've got two to aim for, and it is goes towards Gregorich. Bardacci will go with him. Did he keep the ball in play? Delivers the cross, oh. and he's put wide. 
but the flag was up anyway. Has he put that for offside? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was the ball over the top for Baumgartner, who gets there, skips on. Can't quite see where the offside flags are. Whether the ball went out of play, looked like it goes out of play, but the, the, the linesman holds the flag as if it's offside, but I think he's just flagging that the ball did go out. But an early chance for Gregory, it's just an indicator of how, when that ball is wide, you mentioned his height, Deno, he'll get in the box and he'll attack the ball. And I think that is what Ralph Ragnick looks at thinking, We've, we've, we've had certain elements that, that have been very positive in that first half, but when the ball goes in the box, they've not got enough presence. Well, they've got two centre-forwards in there to aim at now, and hopefully they'll, they'll be hoping to find them with any kind of deliveries that do come into the box. Baumgartner leaps in the air, beaten though by Demiral. Turkey clear the ball away. If anything, it looks like they've changed to 4-3-3, because Arnautovic leading the line. He's just hobbling at the minute on this near side, but Baumgartner is to the right. Gregorich up with him. Sabitz is getting forward as well, so they are committing a lot of red shirts forward now here in Austria as they trial by a goal to nil, and then the referee has spotted a offside free kick to Turkey four to their own penalty area. So Ralph Rangnick just starting to ask a few questions by maybe changing things around a little bit. Yeah, he had to. It's a big half time for him and the team. You know, they've had a brilliant Euro so far, but they're 45 minutes away from going out of this tournament and he knows he's got to roll the dice and actually change a little bit of something they're a well-oiled machine but he's now put Gregoritz and Arnautovic on just to see how that works Seifelt passes the ball back Danso will go square Leinhardt the central defender out it goes to Pras now playing at left back Lima comes onto the ball over the halfway line looks towards Sibitza wriggles clear over on that left hand side Sibitza now delivers the cross and it's met by the head of Demiral to head it away. Only as far as Alexander Pras on that far side. Down towards the corner flag he goes. And it will go out of play for a goal kick. Unable to keep it in play. This versatile player, he can be as a central midfielder, he can play as a wing back, sometimes play wide right. Plays for Sturm Graz. He's actually just had his best season to date for uh, the Austrian side. Nine goals in. 47 appearances so certainly a, an attacking player to go in on that left side of defence yeah, for tra Austria good tracking back from Yulmaz as well he has been very good in the first half and it's, it's going to be a lot about that for Turkey can their attacking players defend well from the front get after the ball and as this game goes on in the next 15-20 minutes they're going to have to really find the energy to, to keep that going for 90 minutes because Austria certainly will Arnautovic just tried to flick it over the head of Yüksek we remember will be suspended for the quarter-finals should they set up a date with the Dutch in Berlin. Posh forward on this near side, the right, curling cross. Gregorich on the, edit, on the end of it, but his header, although he gives it the thumbs up, it was always going off target and out for a goal kick. Yeah, it was one of those balls where he just probably wanted to just head the ball down into the, into the box for another player. Arriving, he had Arnautovic or Baumgartner just arriving, but he couldn't get the right kind of guidance on the header. But that is a, a real indicator about what they want to do, Austria. They're really going to put the two centre backs under pressure. Demiral, who's been pretty good so far in this game defensively, they're going to have to do do some work and earn their money now. Haven't settled yet, Turkey. There was an early ball blade by Kirkchu. Wasn't on the same wavelength as any of that front three as Yilmaz. And Yil Diz are operating on the right and left, respectively, to create the, the run for Gulev through the middle. Sabitza, Seifelt, rolls it out to the right back. Turkish supporters to our right respond with the whistles because Austria are in possession. Sharp turn by Posh, threads it through. Oh, Nautovic, oh. brilliant save by Gunok. So alert to come off his line and gets the, the block save in. He'd seen that danger all day long. What a pass. Brilliant ball, lovely slip pass. Anortovic with the run, and he just has to lift it. He decides to slide the ball along the ground, and Gunot comes out, makes a really good block, but if Anortovic just chips the ball and dinks it, it's in the back of the net. Turkey responding to those positive changes made by Ralph Rangnick. And are on top in the early stages of the second half. But they still trail by a goal to nil. But their crowd are responding, not that you might be able to hear them, away towards our left-hand side. Danso 
Posh down the line. Baumgartner level with the penalty area. Three in red await in the penalty area. Baumgartner slips in the wet conditions. A little bit greasy underfoot. And Bardacci gets it away for Turkey. That'll be headed back though by Leinhardt. Away from Seifelt. Headed forward by Cariolu. Here is the left back laid off by Goulet. And then he was stopped there by Leinhardt. The referee has got his yellow card out, but who's he going to show it to? Everyone's walking away, not me. <laughs> He's calling Leinhardt towards him. So Leinhardt is shown a yellow card. A little bit like um, Russian roulette, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Everyone's walking away, to, looking to the floor, turning their back. No, don't give it to me. But Lein, Leinhardt clearly blocks uh, Goulart. Just lovely movement from him. I mean... He, He's just got such a lovely, silky way about his movement. Lima running forward, Lima into the penalty area, Lima still going left-footed shot, off target. Goal kick, just opened up for him. Oh, I did, he knows it's a chance. It's a really poor effort of a challenge, actually, that comes in from that midfield area that doesn't get dealt with. And he, he just slips on his left foot, he can't really get the contact on the ball to put it goal with he slams the, the floor with his hand because he knows it was a really good opportunity Austria really pushing here now incidentally Leinhardt getting the yellow card he isn't on that one of the number of players on yellow peril Posh with the interception did well preventing it from reaching Yildiz but Turkey are making a game of, sorry Austria are making a game of this but Turkey still lead 1-0 8 minutes into the second half I'm just looking at Lehmer walking around he's hobbling he's actually hurt himself in that movement He's not the type of player that's going to limp about the pitch if he's if he's OK and he's really struggling to walk at the moment. I think he's trying to run the knock-off or whether he slipped and just rolled his ankle, but he's, he's not moving too well. Nearly 200 appearances for RB Leipzig. High-energy player, very talented as Austria in again. Baumgartner with a teasing cross, headed out only as far as Posh. Posh prods it goalwards and it gets deflected behind for a corner kick. And Austria are knocking at the door. Turkey are creaking big time. Chance after chance, the movement from wide. They've just picked up different positions at the start of this second half, Austria. The introduction of Gregoric has really asked a question of Turkey in the back four and their decision-making. The midfield players aren't quite sure where the runners are and they're defending for their lives at the moment. Sabitza with the corner. Got to say, by the way, whilst he's taken the corner on the right-hand side, there were a number of objects that were being thrown in his direction. There was a, a plastic cup, but there were three or four smaller objects yeah. that were being thrown. Yeah, it's poor. It's poor. And, and the way this stadium is, the, the actual stand is raised very high around that corner flag. It's probably a good 10-foot deno, isn't it, from the first seat down to the playing level as it's kind of cut into a bowl, this stadium. So it must be pretty intimidating as a corner taker because the fans are so high above you, right on top of you. Yes, it was rebuilt in 2004 ahead of the World Cup inside the shell of the old Zentral Stadion, which was the biggest stadium in the former East Germany. As Gregoric into Arnautovic, Arnautovic with the chip. Flag was up, it was a late flag, wouldn't have counted anyway. It was always going away from goal. But again, they are showing signs of finding ways through. They're finding the spaces. Gregoric picks up the ball in between the, the left-back and the centre-back. Able to turn on it. The run from Ornatovic goes, similar to the, the chance a moment ago, but he's a good half a yard too early. It's a clear offside. He misses the target, but, I mean, the, the linesman could have put his flag up straight away, really. It was a clear offside. And back in the day, when this stadium, or the old stadium, was built in the 1950s, it was a formidable fortress. It held around 100,000. We actually walked through the old tunnel to access our commentary position today of the, uh, the old central stadion. Um, futuristic arena now for RB Leipzig, where we've seen a, a few games here in the Champions League for BBC Radio 5 Live down the years. But here we are at the Euros. Five Live, BBC Sounds. The final last 16 tie, where Turkey still lead. Cariolu away from Posh, who scampers back. Cariolu runs forward with pace, enters the penalty area. Cariolu drives it, blocked, comes out of the penalty area. Gregoric is on the, on the move. 
as the ball looks to try and get towards him. But Bardacci steps out of defence. And the game is just starting to pick up once again in terms of its tempo. Yeah, it was a chance for Lehmer to really spin the ball down the channel. Every time they win the ball in midfield, Gregorix is just making a run. He literally just turns one of his shoulders either way, spins out and wants to run in behind and really stretch that Turkey defence. It was just a poor pass from Lehmer that time, who I think is really struggling then. I mean, he's hobbling around it. When he tried to hit that long ball then, he couldn't put any power into it at all. Flick header by... Yield is. It looks like he may come off. Kirkshoot. You can see him grimacing even from here, can't you? Just, and I think just walking. There's going to be activity over on that far side, but it's going to be a, a turkey substitution that is going to be made. And it's Yuksek who's going to be coming off. Now, he was booked in the, uh, in the first half, and this is going to be like for like because Sally Erschan is coming on. Borussia Dortmund midfielder, a new substitute in the Champions League final, but you won't be surprised to know that he also is on a yellow card. So Yüksek, he'll be suspended for the quarterfinals. Erschan is going to have to keep his discipline. He may well be a starter, as he was against Czechia earlier in the competition but it's his fourth appearance he's appeared in every game for uh, for Turkey let's get an update from Wimbledon Jonathan Overend two British wins inside the last five minutes terrific victory here on centre court for Jack Draper five sets it needed against the lowly ranked Elias Ema who was inspired on the night but Draper gets it done 6-3 in the final set three hours and 17 minutes and Cam Norrie simpler straight sets also through to the second round against Facunda de Costa. Thank you, Jonathan. Day three of Wimbledon tomorrow, at one o'clock, five live with Claire McDonnell and Gigi Salmon. I mean, the same's happening in the Austria end in terms of the corner. There is bottles and cups being thrown into that corner, Deno. It's not good to see, is it? No, it's not. And in fact, there are a Way lot more. more, a lot more objects that are being thrown at the Turkey players from the Austrian supporters on that far side. And that is not what we want to see at all. Corner kick to Turkey, leading by a goal to nil. It's an in-swinger. It's Demiral again. Demiral and a double. Sheer Turkish delight. They lead now by two goals to nil. And as the Turkey substitutes celebrating on the far side, even more objects are being tossed at them. Demiral runs away. He comes towards the Turkey supporters at this near side. Turkey now have a cushion. Flags have been waved. The flag lead Austria by two goals to nil. Wow, incredible stuff, completely against the runner play. And it's the big centre-back with his second goal of the game. And this time around, it's not just a lucky ball dropped in the six-yard box and you tow it in the back of the net. This is a cracking header, but the delivery, I've said it a couple of times in the first half, that left foot in swinger from Gula is absolutely spot on. It is one of the best deliveries to go and attack, but the height Demiral gets, the timing of the run, he get, towers over Leonhardt, the Austrian centre-back, and just glances the ball from about five yards out into the back of the net. And, th and that is after Gula getting pelted by all of those cups over there. If anything, Deno, it's almost like that fueled him to put the delivery in, and Turkey now 2-0 up, absolutely buzzing in this game. I can only imagine that there's been a, a smoke bomb that has been set off above us because there is a... If you look up above you now, Matt, there yeah. is a, there's a red haze I, somewhere I, from the top tier above us. I was just happy a pint cup didn't come down on top of us, to be honest. Well, that has happened before. Uh, yes, I'm told it does happen here at Leipzig. And all of a sudden, Austria, who had probably made the better start to the second half, find themselves 2-0 down because Turkey from a set piece are now... Two up, they look for Yilmaz. And this is going to be a long way back for Austria. Bearing in mind that Austria have only lost two of their last 19 games. But in that run, they've only conceded multiple goals on two occasions. In the 3-2 defeat to Belgium and when they beat the Dutch by three goals to two. Here is Baumgartner, tries to oh. thread it through, won't run through. Every decision now that goes in favour of Turkey. 
is being celebrated by their supporters away towards the right-hand side. Gunok dives on the ball, but they've got a cushion now. Yeah, defending well. I have to say, Demiral has been excellent. They're tracking the run of Arnautovic, matching him all the way, shepherded in the situation. There was a, passes on for Baumgartner, but they just haven't been able to find that final ball, Austria. When they have, that one chance with Arnautovic, which really, that was a massive moment when you look back now, and you think if he just lifts that ball and takes that chance, Arnautovic, it's a whole different complexion on this game. But as we stand now, Turkey right in the pound seats. Cariolo looks towards Gula. That was a firm block challenge, but he got the... Oh, I thought he got the ball, Leonard. He's absolutely... Clattered into uh, to Gula, who, who who went down. He felt the full impact of the challenge, but well, you tell me as a former central defender. That's fine. That's what I thought. Oh, nothing wrong with that, Deno. Shoulder to shoulder. Maybe a bit of a shove. What noise! Everywhere, with the exception of that bulk of Austrian support behind the goal, away to our left. Turkish flags are being waved. The Turkish supporters are dancing in the stands. They are in the dream scenario with 27 minutes remaining. Leading by two goals to nil. Yet to have a hat-trick in this European Championship here in Germany. Imagine if Demiral was to be the first to uh, score one. Goulet hits it in and Prentz pats the ball down. But Austria, 2-0 down. Kirk shoot as well, cuts out the attack, gets there before Baumgartner. Yield is, has Yilmaz ahead of him. Kirk shoot, cuts it back, edge of the area. There was Ihan. I have the to say that the reaction of the Turkish players when Peltz came and, and, and Pence came and caught the ball there from that, that corner was absolutely superb. The white shirts sprinting back in position. They're not going to give this up, Deno, easily. If Austria are going to get back into this game, they've got to improve their quality in the final third because Turkey know exactly what they have in their grasp and they're not going to give it up at all. That red haze may have disappeared, but now there's that real strong <laughs> smell of sulphur. Yeah. Because already the Turkish supporters here are celebrating as Austria are making a change over on that far side. Leinhardt has left the field to play the central defender, bearing in mind he's on a yellow card. And Verber is the player who has come on for him. And I think that Lima has yep. also left the field to play, not surprised because he was struggling. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not been good since that moment where he ran through, slipped when he had the shot. I don't know what he did, but... He's been hobbling around the pitch. I'm actually surprised he stayed on this long. That was a good 10 minutes ago. Probably could have gone off sooner, really. Grilic is the player who has come on. Grilic, who had started all three matches before tonight in the centre of midfield, replacing Konrad Leimer. Turkey lead by two goals to nil. 65 minutes played, BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. There is a lot more urgency now about this Austrian side. Back towards Danso. The whistles and jeers will tell you that Austria are in possession. The Turkish support probably have about three quarters of this 40,000 Leipzig arena and they are making their presence felt. Danso out towards Baumgartner. Three weight in the middle. Posh can't get there. Sliding Cagliolo gets there first. Behind it goes for a corner kick. Crikey, I don't want to see what the reaction is going to be here. There's already a couple of cups thrown. <laughs> there could be retaliation here from the Turkish fans with the corner taker. Sabitza with his right foot just trying to get everything away from the where the actual ball is. There's actually a cross comes in. Downward header. Chance. Put in the far post. Gregoric arriving at the far post on the half volley, left footed into the roof of the net. Austria are unfinished just yet. They've got to go back. Turkey now lead 2 1. Well, does he like scoring against Turkey or what? This guy knows where the back of the net is, certainly against Turkey, and he just picks up a lovely position. 
Delivery comes into the box. It's a glancing header in and around that near post area. And like any good goal scorer, centre forward, they drift into the back post. He's completely unmarked. It lands right on his feet. Little half volley, left foot, side footed into the roof of the net. This is game on. This is set up brilliantly for a, for a real grandstand finish. Certainly. Don't take your eyes off this one for a moment. Don't concede a corner kick, don't throw objects and your ties <laughs> yeah. might not concede a goal. <laughs> but it's 2-1. Yield it, goes to ground just outside the area. No, the referee tells him he's got to get to his feet. What a finish we have now here as we approach the midway point of the second half on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Austria have got a goal back. Goulet, was he fouled by Danso? No. no, he's told to get to his feet. Referee, all he's got to do is show a yellow, you'll cut out such nonsense. Now, Pras urged on by the Austrian support. Demiral cuts it out. The rain pouring down here in Leipzig, adding to the, the drama with those wet conditions, making it tricky for the defenders. They bounce back off the canvas well of Austria. Have they got it in them to level this tie? In competitive matches, Turkey are unbeaten in their last five against Austria. Cross comes into the penalty area. Bardacci skies it. Yilmaz looks to volley it. He's actually played the ball back into his penalty area and it's headed away by Bardacci. Austria. Playing from left to right. 22 minutes remaining. Gregoric is in again. Oh. He's had a twisting as it went over the top. Straight in the... And the goalkeeper, saved by Gunnok. What a spot from Seabolt. What a pass with his right foot. It's a straight ball, but it's out of nowhere. Gregoric, every single time a midfield player has the ball, he is making a run in behind that turkey back four, whether it's a spin out into a channel, a diagonal one into the box. He just wants it crossed or played over the top or dinked in there. He's been a real handful since coming on. It's almost making it, you kind of wonder why he didn't start the game, Deno. Yeah, it's um, it, 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 it seems to be a bit bit livelier than Arnautovic. I'll be honest with you. I thought, given the fact that with his history against Turkey, he did start the opening game against France. Yeah, Arnautovic came off the bench in that game. And he did well in that game. I was at that game. He played well. Yeah, and then ever since that against uh, Poland and then the Netherlands, Arnautovic led the line, and Gregoric uh, he came off the bench in that three-two victory against the Netherlands. We've had three goals here tonight, just over 20 minutes remain, but it's Turkey who lead by two goals to one in the pouring rain. Danso, over the halfway line, Posh wants the ball to feet, down it goes to Baumgartner. Baumgartner tries to deliver the cross, headed away by Erschan in the midfield for Turkey. And referee from uh, Portugal, Arta Diaz has now given a free kick to Turkey and it will maybe just give Turkey a chance to regroup. Yeah, well, I thought it was a bit of a soft decision, actually. Really soft decision. It's never been a foul. I mean, it, it was Gulak really complaining at the referee. Both players boot at the same level. Neither player had the ball competing for it. I didn't quite see which uh, Austrian midfield, but it might have been Seavolt who came in and won the ball. And the referee five seconds later gave a foul and like you say just took the pressure off Turkey there a little bit they were really under it we're in the eighth largest city in Germany we're 90 miles southwest of Berlin Berlin of course will be the destination for the winners against the Netherlands in the last eight on Saturday night Leipzig which has Europe's largest railway station has been a hive of activity today but who will be heading there the happier as Turkey lead by two goals to one. Seifelt looks to try and release Baumgartner. Bardacci will get there first with the back pass to his goalkeeper. Plays it back towards him, able to control it. Plays it short to this near side. Yildiz back deep inside his own half. Chips the ball up into the air. Kirkshu beaten in the air by Danso. Death little touch by the head of Arnautovic to Baumgartner. Plays it back towards Arnautovic. It was played behind him. And that allowed Demiral and Bardacci between them to deal with the threat. It's a good position from Demiral though, wasn't it? I've been impressed with him. Just to, no, not so much, obviously, he scored two goals, but he's really near the game and he's intercepted some really important passes. Break on now with Mulder, away for Turkey. 
Yilmaz makes the run. Yilmaz thought about the first time shot, takes it wide, cuts it back, nobody there. There was not a white shirt in the penalty area. They do not want to go too far forward. And all of a sudden, just the first sign yeah. of maybe a little bit of apprehension yeah. creeping into the, the Turkey uh, approach. I, I mean, first off, you'd have seen somebody arrive in the box and get on the end of that. I thought Pras was going to make a foul. He had to kind of withdraw a left leg there. I've been so impressed with, with, with Yilmaz. He's been so bright on that right-hand side and he really did go past him. He dangled his kind of left leg out to tackle and had to withdraw it just in case Yilmaz was going to go over it and given the penalty away. This is Florian Grilic in the midfield. Seifelt. Sabitzer. Turkey have everybody back behind the ball. Scooped into the penalty area. Gregoric with the flick on. Arnautovic, I thought, was going to try the overhead kick Ala Bellingham but it didn't sit enough and Demiral was able to head it out Posh the right back right corner of the area for Austria 2-1 they trail Posh delivers the cross it's deep towards the far post Baumgartner gets his head onto it headed out by Ihan. picked up though over on that far side ball played back inside fired back in from the left comes off the head of Demiral and behind for a corner kick 20 minutes is a long time to hang on like this and because of the greasy surface and the how slippery the ball is it's, it's a real heavy rain now isn't it it's kind of like a mist as well it's not it's not like it's huge droplets it's just lots of misty rain dropping onto the pitch it must be really difficult Sabitzer with the corner punched away by Gunok into the area Grilic fired it back in blocked by Cariolu there must be 20, at least 20 empty plastic cups that were thrown in the direction yeah. of Sabitza when he went to take that well, corner kick. I think kick. every time there's a corner, somebody has to run over and clear up afterwards for the next one. They're everywhere. Austria are attacking. Cleared by Ihan on the volley. Out of play, it goes for a throw. If you take those plastic cups back, you get three euros back if you I, deposit. I, I was going to say, I fully expect after the game, if they're still there, I know where you're going to be. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what is it? If, if, you, if you give it, ten back and they're one pound each, you get a tenner. Is that the... It comes the throw. Headed out. You're going to get a red card, I know that. <laughs> I think I prefer working with Chris Sutton and that's You say you get, you get three, so you get three, three euros, euros back. For one of them. So the, 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 if you get a, a glass of Coke, it'll cost you nine euros, but you get three euros back if you return the plastic cup. Nine euros for a glass of Coke? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. It's not cheap, is it? Certainly not. What's a beer? 16 minutes remaining. Turkey still lead 2-1. Posh plays it in low. Sabitza able to turn, delivers the cross. Gregoric was ready and waiting for that one. Comes out to Grilic. Grilic fires it in. Saved by Grunok. Got his body behind that ball. But Turkey is sitting deep and yep. they're allowing Austria onto them. Space opened up. Grilic with the hit. Straight down the throat of Grunok. He, 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 he hit it with a bit of a dip. I think hoping any ball that's going to skip off this surface in front of a goalkeeper is going to be tricky. It's going to be like a bar of soap trying to get hold of it. I think Austria have to try and put him under as much pressure as they can, whether it be from, from crosses or, or shots. Arnautovic, Arnautovic with a shot. Great block. Blocked by Demiral was a good one. Turkey looked to try and get the counter-attack. Stopped by a, a bit of a wobbly Danso, but he, uh, he kept his balance. They feed it out towards that far side. Pras now with Baumgartner. Pras goes ahead of him. Baumgartner was hoping for a corner kick. The referee, though, will signal the goal kick, and that's greeted with cheers of celebration by the Turkey supporters behind that goal they still lead by two goals to one with less than a quarter of an hour remaining yeah, Demiral just organising people around him he's, he's had his distances spot on this evening, stepped in lovely there Arnautovic, he, he is a maverick he does things a bit unusual, he tried to really spin and get a shot off early he anticipated it, stepped in blocked the ball and he's really leading that back line, it's like he's really grown into the game, his confidence must be absolutely sky high two goals and and playing as well as what he is and he's showing that with his body language and leadership at the moment Gregoric look for Arnautovic stopped though by Bardacci just stepped out of defence Cariola looks for the run of Goulet that'll go through towards the Austrian goalkeeper Patrick Pence throws it out underarm with urgency as 14 minutes remain still looking for an equaliser here though uh, Ralph Rangnick's side as now it's with Posh, who's getting a lot more forward on this near side, the right. So bits of level with a penalty area, passes the ball in towards Grilic. That was well read again by Bardacci. 
came across at the near post, dealt with it very, very well. The Galatasaray defender, but they've given it away once more. Then they try and win it back through Yildiz. They had only Ukraine actually had a younger average age in the group stages than Turkey. And they might need those energetic legs to try and carry them over the line, unless maybe Vincenzo Montella is thinking about a change. A Savitsa with a cross, aimed towards Arnautovic, behind for another corner kick, because they're coming under serious pressure. Yeah, good header from Bardacci. Two centre-backs having to really defend now. Arnautovic trying to make the run across him, it's a brave header. Sticks his head through Arnautovic's arm, he's coming across his face, but he makes good contact, punches it out for a corner, and I don't think anyone wants to go and take it. <laughs> Well, Who fact, wants to go and stand there? Turkey are going to make a change. And in fact, Ihan is coming across and he's yeah. pleading with the Turkish support to stop throwing things because, oh. in fact, Sabitza... Somebody's been hit. I think it's Sabitza. Yeah. Sabitza has been knocked to his knees, struck by an object. I couldn't see him because he was on his knees down behind, whether it be a board in this, and the Turkish players, like you say, are coming over and waving their hands at the supporters saying, please, like, enough's enough. I mean, both sets of supporters have been guilty of it, but it just seems every corner, certainly down here, in, in, on our side, down to the right, it's especially bad, and there's a lot of objects being thrown. It's, it's, it's getting a bit silly. There will be repercussions. UEFA will have to take action. Aksakolu has replaced Goulet. There's been a... Another change which I'll tell you about, Jokoslu was the player who's come on, I can tell you, for his second appearance of these Euros, the West Bromwich Albion midfielder. Sabitzer to take the corner kick, goes in towards the near post, Ihan was there. It was... Just trying to see who's also gone off. Yildiz, Yildiz has gone off, so Jokoslu and Atakolu are the two players who've come on. Corner kick is headed out. So that's a, def a defensive change that has been made by Vincenzo Montella to yeah. replace Yildiz with Jokoslu. I don't think he's had much choice, has he? I think he sees that the energy isn't there to be getting forwards. There's nobody making it in the box. That, that one from Yilmaz earlier where he, he chops out of it and cuts the ball back lovely to the penalty spot. There wasn't a white Turkish shirt anywhere to be seen. And he just thinks, right, we've got to ride this out. 12, 15, 16 minutes or so to hang on to this one goal lead and we're going to make a defensive change. There probably will, that, will be that if you take into consideration the stoppage time. Yeah. My watch is saying 11 minutes of normal time, but the amount of substitutions you'll be looking at at least four, maybe five, as Matt says. Here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Posh on this near side the right. Grilich takes over with his short, dark hair. Lays it off towards Danso. Whistles once more from the Turkish support. Grilich now will, midway through the Turkey half, Seifelt wants it, instead it's back towards Danso. No one wanting to come out of their position to challenge the Austrian central defender. Posh on this near side, the right, tries to play it in, Seifelt makes the run, with the cut back, oh. and it was dealt with by Ihan. Gregoric was almost there. That was good alert play though by the defensive midfielder, Khan Ihan for Turkey. I mean, Gregoric must be fuming with himself there. He didn't make the run across the face of him. It was lovely play. I mean, there didn't seem to be the space to get the ball in, but they managed to get it in there, and he just didn't get across the face of the defender. They're probing. And they're putting up Turkey under a lot of pressure. Sabitza onto his left foot. Cross, blocked, volleyed away by Kirkchu. Oh, he's fallen awkwardly. He might have pulled a hamstring there the way he reacted. Clutched his hamstring. He's waving to the bench. Kirkchu will not be able to continue. Here is Sobitza. Kirkchu, incidentally, will miss the quarter-final should they see this through through suspension. As Posh comes forward now, cuts inside. Seifelt behind him. Looks little touched by Gregoric. Arnautovic is there. The Turkish defence stands firm. Danso out towards Sabitza on the right-hand side, delivers the ball towards what the far ball. post. What a ball. And it will go off a goal kick off the body of Baumgartner because Turkey really were stretched and oh. two Turkish players have gone down. Wow. Cramp for Bardacci and Kurtzku because he's got a hamstring issue. I mean, the cross from Sabitza was inch perfect. It drifted over the top of the first centre-back in that position. 
And if Gregoritz had made a run across the faces twice now, he hasn't just made that initial move. He's got to gamble a little bit more. You get into the stage of the game where you can't wait and hold out and peel out the bag. You've got to get across the face of defenders. The balls are flying into the box. And you need to make contact. I mean, it's such difficult conditions to, to manage the ball. But Turkey are really starting to, to fade then, aren't they? They've got a lot of issues making subs. They've got injuries on the pitch. They're under real pressure. Well, they've used three substitutes already, but this will be their final opportunity to make another change. So are they going to make a double change? Or are they going to wait to, if, you know, and see if they can hold on? I but Kirk Chu's definitely going to have to come off because he'd signal to the bench. Well, they're kind of like stretching him like he's got cramp. But it, it looked like he... It, well, he may have crank, but he certainly cleared that ball and went. the hand went straight to the hamstring and he's been hobbling around ever since. Kavecchi is the player who's going to be coming on. Uh, an attacking player. First appearance of these Euros. He, uh, he missed the start of it through injury, did the, uh, the Fenerbahce player. Had a terrific season, 18 goals in 45 appearances. Whilst this change takes place, by the way, and Kirk, you remember, will be suspended along with Yüksek. With polling day fast approaching, the newscast is available on BBC Sounds that will provide you with the latest analysis. So it's not just the, uh, the football podcast through BBC Sounds, which, of course, the Football Daily every day from our time out here in Germany. But on Thursday, on polling day, Rachel Burton and Nick Robinson, quarter to ten, will be hosting Five Lives general election coverage which will roll all the way through until the football starts again on Friday at 4.30 with Spain, Germany and Portugal, France for the first of those quarterfinals live on BBC Five Live and BBC Sounds. Who will make the final lineup, completing that last berth in the last eight? Will it be Austria, who trail by two goals to one, or will it be Turkey, looking to hold on here in Leipzig? Under seven minutes remain. Austria, on oh, oh, it was behind them so again close. in the penalty area. So, so close. I mean, Baumgartner nearly tackles the ball right into his path. Austria coming on strong, desperate defending in the penalty area. Bit of a scramble, edge of the area. Danso, out towards Posh. Posh sends another cross in. Gunnar couldn't get there. And it was Baumgartner arriving who couldn't get on the end of a teasing ball in from the right. Out for a goal kick. But Turkey really are stretched. If that's Gregoric, he scores. If he's two inches taller, he gets over the top of that and he scores. Gunnar nowhere near it. He comes fishing for the cross. It's a brilliant ball in. And you just feel Austria have to maintain real calmness, not get too rash, not get too twitchy making the wrong decision. They're going to have another at least 10 minutes of this game. It's a, there's plenty of time. Don't force it, make good decisions with the ball and, and, and don't hurry it. They're in danger of it getting a little bit messy when they're on the edge of the 18-yard box. Turkey try and clear their lines. Austria keep the ball in play. Andy Gillies, one of our football producers, was listening to our commentary on a serene walk somewhere in, uh, in, in Devon. You couldn't be further away <laughs> with that sort of, like, setting... When you think about the, the frenzied nature of this atmosphere here in, in Leipzig, with just over five minutes remaining, but I guess that's the beauty of BBC Sounds. You can take us wherever you go, wherever you may, where you may be in the UK, back home. Posh. Sabitza. Back to goal in the penalty area. Posh. Lost his footing. Out for a Turkish throw. Cariolo takes a breather. And then whips up the crowd once more as the six or seven drummers on the front row behind that goal beat away to their heart's content. Gregoric, his forward ball, corner. takes a deflection. It'll run behind for a corner kick to Austria. Four and a half minutes of normal time to go. Well, it's his favourite corner side. It's the corner of which Turkey scored from so early in the first half and it's Sabitzer this time with an outswinger with his right foot. Sabitzer. Out swinger and the header from Baumgartner over the head. In fact, I noticed on that occasion there Nothing. were two Turkish officials, one yeah. of them with a with a brolly, again trying to say to the supporters, "Don't throw uh, yeah. anything." I think they're gonna, you know, they're getting the message up there saying you could actually really spoil this if you keep throwing stuff. There could be serious sanctions and a, and a, and a real problem. So, thankfully, the 
they're behaving themselves and, and not doing it anymore. Gunnar with a goal kick. Under four minutes remaining. They have a slender lead through Demiral. Hadn't scored in two years. He's popped up with two in this contest here in the last 16. Looking for a first quarter final in 16 years. Danso. Grilich gets it back from Posh. Every outfield player is in the Turkey half to our right. Grilich delivers the cross. It arcs its way. Doesn't go out of play. Gets in by Pras. Far side the left. Down by the corner flag. Held up by Mulder. Plays it back. Verba infield. Grilich takes over. Seifelt. Turkey are just not moving, with the exception they've got about eight across the edge of their own penalty area. As Sabitza slips, passes the ball in field, 35 yards out from goal. Grilich has to stretch into the challenge. No foul. Seibelt now comes forward for Austria. So many red shirts to aim for in the penalty area as the cross comes in. Attacked by Werber with vigour. And Aktakolu now can maybe break for Turkey. Yilmaz is scampering away if Aktakolu can find him. His forward ball, Yilmaz tries to get there. But Prince slides out to his goal and Pence gets there first, the Austrian keeper. And all of a sudden Austria can attack. Far side the left, another sliding challenge comes in. Ihan and he punches the air with sheer determination. That was like a goal-saving challenge for sure. God, oh, what a cracking passage of play that was. The tackle from Pence coming out, and then that one there just wins the ball. The referee right on top of it, waving play on. This game is really flowing nicely. Axakolo, Yilmaz in the penalty area to finish it, and he hammers it right-footed. It was a, a loose finish, really. I think he had support. Well, the flag was up anyway, was it? Yep, it wouldn't have counted. He went for the glory. Meanwhile, what a game this has been. Immense. Thoroughly enjoyable. Absolutely immense. I'm looking at Demiral just stretching his hamstring there as well, Deno. He's carrying, hopefully for Turkey, just a bit of cramp because they can't lose too many more players. It'd be a real shame going into the next round if they, if they make it. They're going to have to really assess the squad with bookings and injuries. 90 seconds remain of normal time Turkey are so close Austria though are not finished yet this is Grilich out towards Posh Turkey camped in and around their own penalty area I mean, what a pace this game's been played at you're really seeing the signs now this last five minutes nearly every player on the pitch bar the substitutes looking really heavily fatigued Ball is swept out to this near side. Aktakolu ducks underneath it. Goes out of play for a throw. By my watch, we're inside the last 60 seconds. I can see on the far side that the fourth official, who's from Ukraine, Nikola Balakin, has been handed the electronic scoreboard. And the Turkish supporters all the way around this stadium now are starting to celebrate. We will find out how much added on time there will be. Are those celebrations premature or will they be justified and vindicated as their sides still lead by two goals to one here? We're about to find out. The fourth official is poised. Turkey lead 2-1. Austria on this near side, the right. They came through as Group D winners ahead of France and the Dutch. It's only four. Only four minutes. There's another object is tossed towards Sabitza, who plays the ball towards Grilich. They're doing a great job of stopping the crosses at the moment, Turkey. Austria desperate to cross the ball, but they've got players out in the face of the Austrian players, blocking that line where they want to cross it. They're doing a great job. They're defending deep. Baumgartner, Gregorich tries to get his head on it. Baumgartner heads it back on the edge of the area. Mulder heads it away. But because they're sitting so deep, it just keeps on coming back. Wave and wave of Austria pressure. Austria attacks. Cross from the left. Gregorich is there. Oh. Followed away by Demiral. Just before Posh, who's now playing as a centre forward, could get there. And now another player has gone down. Bardacci once more with Cramp. I'm not surprised. They have put everything on the line. Well, what a final chance you feel for Austria. Great ball in. He wins the header, Gregorich, but he doesn't get the right contact. 
two centre-backs are competing with him. He's on the floor, Bardacci, Demerar's holding his hamstring. I mean, it's just chaos in there at the moment. Energy sapping conditions, heavy pitch. A game that has been played at a fast tempo throughout. They reckon that Friedrich Schiller in this city steeped in its musical history wrote his poem, The Ode to Joy, during his stay in Leipzig. Well, there will be more than a chorus of jubilation in about two and a half minutes' time if Turkey can see this over the line, leaving Austria still without a win in a knockout match in a major tournament since the 1954 World Cup. 70 years they looking to try and banish it. They came in with high hopes after doing so well as Group D winners. Play back underway. They're attacking on the left-hand side. Ihan, so effective in that defensive midfield role, gets it away and the cheers will tell you it's a turkey throw far side the right. 90 seconds remain. Five live and BBC sounds. Well, he's just got the ball as if he's going to take it quickly. I think all the Turkish players are just waving their hands to say, whoa, just leave it, drop the ball, walk away, let's slow it down. Take as long as we can to take this throw in and just throw it down the line. Be prepared to be showered in beer from the supporters ahead of us, I would imagine. As Arnautovic, one last chance maybe for Austria. Sabitz are just crowded out by the white shirts of Turkey. Just over 60 seconds remain. Turkey scored in the first 58 seconds. If they can hold out for the final 58, they'll be in the last eight. Posh with a cross, teasing ball, dealt with well by Bardacci. Cariolo now will run it clear. Cariolo runs clear. Chased by red shirts. Yilmaz is onto it. Yilmaz, edge of the area. Yilmaz for Turkey. Yilmaz shoots low, saved by Pence. This place would have erupted had that goal gone in. 40 seconds left. Austria. What a finish here in Leipzig. Demerel stands firm and clears long. An Austrian player, meanwhile, is being held to his feet by his goalkeeper. Such was the desperation to get back. Everybody's putting it on the line in Leipzig. The whistles are deafening. Sabitzer goes long. Demerel throws himself at it. Volleyed away once again. Ten seconds remain. Look at the watch from the referee. Arta Diaz, Sabitza chips it to the edge of the area. Demeral again climbs high. Ball lifted back oh. in. Downward header. What a save. What a save by Gunok. The downward header by Baumgartner. And Gunok with shades of Gordon, Gordon Banks. Banks. Down to his right hand side. What a save. Strong right hand. Flicked it away. What a moment. Unbelievable stuff, it's exactly what I thought. It was Gordon Banks, that just the way the ball bounces off the turf with his right hand, he just spins it round the post. Brilliant save. The goalkeeper has come up from the back, Pence. The four minutes of added on time are over. Sabitzer still with objects being thrown over on that far side, the left. If this, if this goes in, Deno, it would just be crazy. I mean, I don't know what the Turkish fans would do, to be honest, if this goes in the back of the net. Corner kick, far side the left. The keeper's up there, Pence, can't get there. Turkey will break. They scored a goal on the break against Georgia, you might recall, on match day one. They've won the ball, but there is the final whistle. The Turkish players are flat out on their feet. Wild celebrations, because they're into their first quarter final in 16 years. And everybody, everybody to a man, Races to embrace Mert Gunok. Demeral might be the match winner with his two goals, but Gunok definitely the match saver with a world class save as Turkey go through by two goals to one. I cannot think of a better game I've seen with tempo, energy, drama, commitment. I mean, the Turkish back line have put their body on the line, the two centre-backs, Demiral Badacci, wow, what a game they've had, Demiral throwing his head on the ball, scoring two goals, organising the back four, 
I mean, Baumgartner, I think he, he thought he was in the back of the net. Oh. The contact he gets on the header is looped back over to the back post. He punches the header down, he does everything right. And off that greasy surface, then the way it skips off the turf, to be able to get your right hand to it, spin it round the post, what a save at full stretch. Well, we looked at each other and we both said simultaneously, yeah. Gordon Banks. Gordon Banks, it just straight away in your head. It was identical, the kind of style of the save. And, I mean, these Turkish fans are going crazy. Kelly, it's an incredible sight here. We've got red flares being let off. The Turkish flags are flying high. Some of the Turkish players now are only getting to their feet. They were literally flat out on their feet at the end. They're acknowledging their support. They're in all areas of this ground. And Turkey, with a real strong smell of sulphur, that will burn brightly into the night of Leipzig because they're into their first quarter-final in 16 years and their first Euros knockout success in open play and a quarter-final against the Dutch in Berlin will feel like another home tie, I'm sure. What a match. Incredible. Denner, we're just waiting for the Turkish fans to take to the streets here in Berlin because there is such a huge Turkish population here. It's the biggest population of Turkish people outside of Turkey itself. But what a game. What a way to make it through to the quarterfinals. Matt, I don't think I've ever wanted extra time in a game quite so much. <laughs> No, absolutely. I'll be sitting in. I'll be more than happy if that had gone in the back of the net and we've got another half an hour. How they would have managed it, Kelly, though, I'm not sure they could, to be honest. It was like a war zone in both boxes. The players at full stretch. The way Yilmaz went to try and score at the end, I mean, to pick a man of the match in this game would be tricky because there was so many top performers. The commitment level, what it meant to the players. I mean, they just put it out there on the grass and we all enjoyed it. You know, it was a real spectacle. To, to be here, Re really thoroughly enjoyed the game and just a privilege to be at this one, to be honest. Matthew Upson and Ian Dennis are there for these incredible scenes and those players don't seem to want to leave the pitch and the fans don't, certainly don't want them to, Ian. No, they're just, uh, they've done the usual line-up with all the officials as well in one single line and have just gone and run up towards the Turkish support behind that goal. But it's not just behind that goal as well, because if I look up towards the, uh, the tier above us here, all the way along, from left all the way to the right, Turkish flags are flying high on the far side as well. The only exception is that large wall of red where the Austrian players have gone to acknowledge their support and to be fair, the Austrian supporters have stayed behind and are giving them a nice ovation they, too. They are now, but there was such a stillness, because it's hard to see, because it's all red, isn't it? But the stillness in the Austria fans behind that goal, it was just a quiet, just nobody moved, everyone still, and now they're, they're, they're just showing their appreciation to the Austrian players, who have been absolutely superb in these Euros, I have to say. Oh, it's such a shame that both of these sides can't be in the quarterfinals. Yep. There's been so much entertainment from, from both of them. In fact, we should have probably an open vote to allow both these sides to stay in and vote for the most boring team to come out. The only problem is, mm. as far as, as, far as the <laughs> three of you are concerned, it might not be the right outcome in terms of the vote. Look, we're, we're just watching it, and there is a, a stillness, a certainly still amongst the, the Austrian players. Chris Sutton's here in our Berlin studio, and often players say, one of the great things they wish they could do at the final whistle of a big game and a big win is to dive into the crowd. Actually, if you run around the corner from our Berlin studio, you could go and join the Turkey fans who are on the fan mile at the moment. Oh, I could do. I mean, the, the, the support was amazing. Um, the game I watched them against Portugal in, uh, in Dortmund. I mean, you know, the, the guys have described the atmosphere in the stadium absolutely perfectly. I mean, it's, it's Bedlam in there, the um, court quarter-final now in Berlin. It doesn't get any better than that. And what about, I mean, the save at the end. Chris, Chris, we'll, Chris we'll, we'll, sorry to interrupt, but I'm just saying, Kalanolu, who was suspended tonight, the Turkish players now have formed a, a circle around the centre circle with all the officials. Kalanolu, who is suspended, has called Demiral, who I think has been named as the player of the match, but they're also calling Gunok, as you say, they want him in the middle as well, and I think here they're going to acknowledge the, the double goal scorer and then Gunok for his match-saving save right at the end. So at the minute, they, they're, they're waiting, and we can hardly see them because still the smoke, and another flare has been thrown onto the pitch, the smoke is drifting into our line of vision.
Bardacci has made his way there as well, but they're waiting for every member, the coaching staff and the players, and they're actually calling somebody else forward as well that looks like it might be Khan Ihan, and he embraces Demiral in the middle, but Chalanolu, who is in there as well, is having a word with all of these key players, because Turkey played with such determination, commitment, spirit, endeavour, and they're wanting, they're going to do something, we'll have to wait and see what it is. Well, we will have to wait and see what, well, rather you will have to wait and see what it is because you're the one in Leipzig who'll be bringing us uh, all the stories of, of what's happening on the pitch in Leipzig as Turkey progressed to the quarterfinals of the European Championships after an absolutely thrilling game to watch, an exhausting game to watch, an exhausting game just from the, the outside of it. But Austria more than played their part in this. They've oh. had a fantastic tournament. Here and we go. they go out of the European Championships. Deno, are you trying to come in there? I was just saying, here we go. So the, all the officials now are trying to whip up the Turkish supporters. They're, they're turning around and applauding. I think what they're waiting to do, they're waiting for the Austrian team to leave the field of play. So at the minute, the Turkish players and officials are turning around and are acknowledging the Austrian players and the Austrian support as well at the moment. So it's a very sporting gesture at the moment here. And as they troop off the Austrian team, are we going to gate crash the news? We're we going into the news there, Kelly. You carry on, you carry on. So now all of a sudden, as the Austrian players troop off, they're building up that sense of anticipation with every team member, every member of the coaching staff, their arms aloft on the edge of the centre circle, they're now crouching down, and now all of a sudden they rise to their feet and whip up the crowd even more, and right at the heart of it is Demiral and Gunok, and I think these celebrations are going to go on for quite a while. <laughs> It's just incredible scenes in Leipzig and real celebration of a really special moment. Look, they're into the quarterfinals. This isn't just, Chris Sutton, about getting to this stage of this competition. This is about the way in which Turkey have done it. And this is about harnessing all that emotion that they throw into every game, all that energy. And they, they do it with the celebrations as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And the way they dug in towards the end of the game, I mean, talk about uh, Demirel, uh, you know, he was struggling maybe with a hamstring injury or, or cramp. They sat deep. Austria pummeled them towards the end of the game. They defended the box so well. They showed that spirit, got over the line. I was saying uh, before Deno um, uh, came in there, the save from Gunok in years to come, they'll be looking back at that moment. That'll be one of the great saves. In, in you know in, in Euro's history, unbelievable moment, and they have got over the line. I mean, what a story they've been all the way through this competition, and now what they've got the Netherlands, and you wouldn't put it past them.